Hi there. Welcome back to another episode of Fairy Tale Nails. Today's story and nail design is Dick Whittington and his cat. I don't remember reading the story as a kid, but I do like how every story from this old book comes from a different part of the world. Today, we will be traveling to London, where apparently the streets are paved in gold. For those new to my channel, I wanted to share just a quick explanation for why I've decided to create this series. When I moved to Australia, I inherited this beautiful old book of fairy tales. These are the original fairy tales. Some stories you've no doubt heard, but some maybe you haven't. And not all of them have happy endings. I decided to create this channel as a way of preserving these beautiful old stories and to help expand my other passion, which is nail art. So sit back, relax, and I really hope you enjoy hearing a new, old fairy tale story. Thanks, guys. Once upon a time, when the world seemed a much larger place because people had to go nearly everywhere on foot, a boy called Dick Whittington lived in a village in England. His father and mother were both dead, and there was no one to look after him. The people of the village used to give him food when they could spare it, but Dick was always hungry. In those days, the great city of London seemed like a fairyland to country folk who would never visit in their lives. And Dick heard many strange things about London. Its streets, people said, were paved with gold. This interested Dick, who had always been poor, and he decided to go to London and see for himself. It was a very long walk to London, and Dick Whittington would never have found his way there if it had not been for a wagoner who let him walk beside his cart. After journeying many days, they came to the great river Thames and could see the city of London with all its tall church spires across the water. The wagoner paid a toll and then they were allowed to cross the London Bridge and pass through a large gate into the city. Now you're on your own, the wagoner said to Dick, and the boy set off bravely, hoping soon to find the streets that were paved with gold. But instead of gold, he found mud in the streets and streams of dirty water running down the middle of them. People hurried past him, carrying loads of chickens, milk, and fruit, or shoved him against the wall of the tall houses to make room for their horses to pass. Everyone seemed to be shouting to be heard, and everyone seemed in a hurry. No one wanted to listen to him, or give him food, or even a chance to work. Presently, he found himself outside the gate of a large house. He could see into the big courtyard, which was piled with sacks of corn and barrels of food. Servants were carrying them up into the attics and down into the cellars. With so much going on in the household, Dick thought there might be some work for him there, too. A delicious smell of roast pork and baked apples came flooding over to him from the kitchen, and so he decided to ask the cook for a job as a kitchen boy. Unfortunately, the cook was a very cross woman with a temper as hot as the ovens she stoked. She gave Dick Whittington several cuffs around the ears as he told her his story. And then she told him that he could stay and clean out the pots for her and eat the scrapings inside them if he was hungry. The pots were all made of iron and very heavy, and some of them were almost as large as Dick himself. They were always covered with soot from hanging over the open fire, and the cook was forever scolding Dick for not getting them clean. As a punishment, she made him sleep in a small attic under the roof. The only light was what came through the cracks in the tiles. All he had to lie on was a bale of hay, and he had to share this with the mice and rats who nested in it. He could not sleep at night because they were continuously fighting and scratching for food. One Sunday morning, when he had a little time off, Dick Whittington went down to the river to see the big ships lying at anchor there. He was walking over the cobblestones when he saw something bright shining in the sunlight at his feet. He bent down and picked up a small gold coin. Eagerly, he hurried to the nearest fish stall and asked the woman there if he could buy her cat. She agreed, and he took the cat home, where it soon caught all the rats and mice that had made him so miserable. The house belonged to a wealthy merchant named Fitzwarren, and soon after this he called all his family and his servants together. One of his big ships was about to set sail on a trading voyage, and he told them that each of them could send something on it to be sold or exchanged for rich goods in foreign lands. 
Everyone had something to send, save Dick Whittington, who owned nothing but his cat. But he finally let them persuade him to send it with the captain on the forthcoming voyage. For many months, nothing was heard of the ship, and the cook began to bully Dick more and more. She threw things at him if he was late, and hit him if he got in her way. She shouted at him whatever he did. Dick was so unhappy that at last he decided to run away. Early one morning, he wrapped his spare shirt in a red spotted handkerchief, tied it to a stick, and left the house without waking anyone. He had no idea which direction he should take. But when he had trudged the deserted streets for a while, he found himself at the top of the Highgate Hill and sat down on a stone to have a last look at the city of London and consider what he should do next. Just then, bow bells began to ring. Turn again, Whittington, Lord Mayor of London, they seemed to call. And they sang it again and again, echoing loud and clear across the hushed early morning air, until Dick jumped up, his heart pounding with excitement. Lord Mayor of London, he exulted to the sky. Me, Dick Whittington, it's worth putting up with that mean cook and her dirty pots and pans if I can drive around the city in a fine coach when I grow up. It was wrong to try to run away. I must go back again right away. And so Dick Whittington hurried back to the merchant's house by the river and managed to creep into the kitchen before anyone had noticed his absence. Meanwhile, Mr. Fitzwarren's ship, with the cat on board, was having a rough voyage and a long one. At last, it was driven by the wind into a part of the Moorish coast, which no traders had ever visited before. The Moors were delighted to see the captain and his crew, and their king ordered a big feast to be prepared for them. However, before anyone had a chance to eat more than a mouthful or two of the food, a swarm of rats and mice burst into the room, ran all over the table, and ate up everything on the richly laden plates. The Moorish king explained that the country was infested with these vermin and that he would give anything to be rid of them. At this, the captain saw a chance of striking an even better bargain with the king. Your majesty, he announced, your troubles are ended. You need not be starved for your food anymore. I carry with me on my ship a great and terrible creature, the enemy of all rats and mice. So greatly do these vermin fear it that the smell of it alone will keep them away from your kitchens and granaries. The king was amazed to hear of such a creature and asked to see it at once. The captain hurried back to his ship and returned with Dick's cat under his arm. He set it down on the carpet in front of the king and queen and immediately its whiskers began to twitch. Then its tail flicked from side to side and its eyes narrowed into two yellow slits. Suddenly, it pounced under the queen's throne and pulled out a big rat that had been hiding there. It killed the rat, and then another, and then another, until, within a surprisingly short time, almost all the vermin had been killed. The king ordered another great feast to be held, and this time, everyone had as much to eat as they liked. After a few days of feasting, the captain began to make ready to sail. The king wanted to buy the whole ship's cargo and offered him, in addition, half the treasures in his kingdom in exchange for the cat. Instead of Dick's cat, however, the captain let him have five of her kittens, and the grateful king ordered his treasury to be opened and half its contents carried to the boat. Heavily loaded, the ship sailed away, and after many weeks it anchored safely in the river Thames, close to Mr. Fitzwarren's house. There was a great excitement as the caskets and barrels full of jewels and gold, cloth and spices, were carried into his courtyard. Dick ran out to meet his cat, which was very pleased to see him, and kept rubbing its head against his legs. The captain told Mr. Fitzwarren the story of the cat and the rats, and at the end of it, the merchant said, Why, then half of this treasury is Dick's, and may God's blessing be on it. You are all to call him Master Whittington now, and the cook is to cook him the best dinner she can to celebrate his good fortune. From then on, Dick Whittington's fortunes changed. Instead of being cuffed by the cook all day long, he began to read books and study maps and talk with wise people. He bought ships of his own and traveled around the world with them, always taking his cat wherever he went. He had grown into a handsome man, and there wasn't a girl in London who would not have been glad to marry him. But of all the girls Dick had seen, Mr. Fritz Warren's daughter, Alice, who had been a pretty little girl when he was still a kitchen boy, was the one he loved the best. So they married and lived happily ever after. But Dick Whittington never forgot the poor. He gave money to hospitals and churches and to schools, and at length the king knighted him for his services. Three times Sir Richard Whittington served as Lord Mayor of London, and you can see his name to this day in the city's records.
Thanks so much for watching this episode of Fairy Tale Nails. Please comment below one of your favorite fairy tales, and we'll see if it's in the book. If you like this channel and are looking forward to the next fairy tale nail tale, please let me know in the comments below. If you like this episode and would like to see more, please consider subscribing. That way you'll be notified when the next episode is complete. I really hope you enjoyed this episode and nail design. I feel like I'm slowly catching on to how to create videos with the timing and music and story all syncing up like it's supposed to. And each video is getting just a little bit better. So thank you so much for sticking with me during the ugly duckling stage. I can't wait to see what new nail designs we come up with for the next story. Thank you so much for watching. See you guys next time. Bye.